about how to optimize your ads. And I don't have experience with Google ads. I haven't run my own Google ads, but I do know some things about ads. And if you already have ads running, it means that you are paying for traffic. You are paying for eyeballs to that ad, and then you're hoping to convert them into a sale. So once you have an ad running, you're not done. <laughs> if you're in the marketing world like I am, um, you know that even if you have an ad running, your, your job is not done yet. So if you're not in the marketing world, sometimes we think, oh, I just create an ad and then it's running and it's all good. But if you're in the marketing world, once you create an ad and it's running, your job is to pay attention to the statistics, pay attention to how, mu how many eyeballs, how much traffic is actually seeing your ad and how much of that traffic is converting to a sale. And the reason for that is that there's a few things that you can tweak and experiment with and play with to make sure that you have the best ad possible. Rarely do we create our best ad on the first try, just like we don't write our book just the first draft and then it's wonderful and done. No, <laughs> it takes tweaking and editing. There's a process. So the same thing with ads. With ads, the first thing you wanna pay attention to or play with is the audience. Who is being shown your ad? Now, I'm not sure in Google Ads, but I know in Facebook, you can actually pick and define your audience. And in Facebook, you can actually make copies of ads and then tweak different things. So you could make a copy and then do a different audience, a slightly different multiple versions. So with Google Ads, I'm guessing that you can also pick your audience or at least put some kind of input about it. So that would be the first thing. See if your audience is converting, tweak it a little if it's not having the results that you want and experiment. The second and third areas are your copy on your ad and the picture because you know how many eyeballs are seeing your ad, but if you're not happy with the percent that are then buying your book, look at your copy, look at the pictures, see if you could run a similar ad with a different picture, with different copy. The goal of your copy for an ad is to grab the attention. So you wanna have a hook or some kind of thing where they think, oh, that looks really interesting or that looks really good. And then if you can also have some kind of result and what they will get, or like why it matters. So if you're doing nonfiction, this can be a little simpler because for example, if you have a devotional, it may be, you know, in one minute a day, you can draw closer to God. Even if you're a busy professional, this devotional is for you. Now, if you're fiction, it might feel like a little bit more work, but I also think that sometimes fiction has it easier because you've already crafted this compelling story. So you could put a quote of someone recommending the book. You could put um, like part of your book blurb that just kind of leaves the audience hanging and wondering what's gonna happen to this character, um, showing the conflict that they're experiencing or the thing that they have to overcome. So as you're doing your ad, think about your copy and your picture and I encourage you to do different versions and test it. One more tip for ads is to research and look at what other people are doing on that platform. So if I'm running a Google ad, I would go to Google and see what types of ads are on there for books. I, if I'm doing a Facebook ad, I would look at other ads on Facebook and intentionally take time to not just glance at it, but really analyze. Analyze the heading, the pictures, the copy, and see if that sparks ideas for you to optimize your ad. So a few things to think about, Janice. Let me know.